Well, hi, everybody. Uh, sad day, OJ Simpson died. And I got a notification, a news notification that was just four minutes old via TMZ that OJ passed away. Uh, and I'm shocked because I had no idea he, he died. I, to me, he had recreated himself as a Las Vegas vlogger and was doing well. Now, I have to admit, I haven't kept up with OJ as much as I planned to, because I really, when I did, I really enjoyed his blogs. He had a lot of wise views on a number of, of topics, primarily in the National Football League. Uh, OJ really had fashioned himself into a true vlogger spokesperson. He used his smartphone extremely well. Um, now, a lot of you know OJ because of the incident. But I know OJ because my mom and I lived next to his brother Melvin between 1990, excuse me, 1980, 19, <laughs> 1977 and 1980 at Watergate Apartments in Emeryville, California. We were on we were on Captain's Drive, and it was just by happenstance that we wound up moving or wound up having him as a neighbor because we were there first. <laughs> uh, but they were really nice, Melvin and his wife. And unfortunately, they got a divorce. But Melvin and his wife invited me to a gathering with the Simpson family to go and watch the first game of OJ Simpson as a 49ers preseason game at Candlestick Park, which is no longer there. Uh, I was really honored and just, it was just an incredible time. We had 50 yard line seats. Uh, didn't get a chance to talk to OJ because they had him questered off and he was treated like the superstar that he was at the time before life changed for him in 1994. And I still can't believe that happened, but it did. It did. The, before that comes up, the OJ Simpson, I prefer to remember is the OJ Simpson as a vlogger. And this was his last video blog right here. This was February 11th. This was the day of the Super Bowl when and he announced from his chair it's not a wheelchair but a chair but here's what he what he said on that day make sure your volume is up hey x well it's me yours truly boy what a beautiful day it is here in las vegas even though the game is indoors it wouldn't have mattered but still it's nice to have a beautiful day like this hey let me take a moment to say thank you to all the people who reached out to me uh uh, my health is good. I mean, obviously, I'm dealing with some issues, uh, but hey, I think I'm just about over it, and I'll be uh, back on that golf course, hopefully, in a couple of weeks. But it's very nice hearing from you and hearing those good, positive words. Thank you. Now, as far as the game goes, uh, obviously, my prediction is not hope. I'm basing it on who's on the field. Uh, I see a, a 24 to 20 win. By the 49ers. <laughs> and that, that's, that's not hope. I'm basing that on, on the quality of the players that are on the football field. So who's going to be MVP? Prody, I mean, Purdy or McCaffrey. Of course, if KC wins, it'll probably be uh, Mahomes. But I'm predicting number 19. And I'm not talking about Johnny Unitas. <laughs> now, in any event, well, we got a few more hours and we'll know. Uh, please, I hope you were with friends, uh, the ones who are not going to the game. And, hey, just it, it should be a great game because all the great players that are involved. Hey, God bless. Take care. And I hope your team win uh, if that your team is the 49ers. <laughs> God bless. Take care. And that was his last vlog. That was February 11th. So let's see, February, March, and now April. We are now exactly two months from 
his last video blog. So he at one point was vlogging on a weekly basis, sometimes more than once a week. And he, uh, but then obviously his health had deteriorated to a point where he couldn't even do that anymore. That's really sad. Now, in the previous vlog that I saw from of him here, uh, this was when someone, I guess, the word, this is February 9th, okay, because he went, did this on the 9th, but he was talking about rumors that he was in hospice care. Here. Hey, X-Will. Hospice? Hospice? You talking about hospice? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm not in any hospice. I don't know who put that out there, but whoever put that out there, I guess it's like the Donald say, can't trust the media. Uh, in any event, I'm hosting a ton of friends for, for the Super Bowl here in Las Vegas. All is well, <laughs> you know? So, hey, guys, take care. Have a good Super Bowl weekend. So that's hey, so we addressed it that one, right? And then before that, February 2nd, where he was mourning the passing of uh, Leo. Hey, X-World, it's me, yours truly. Just want to take a moment to uh, send my condolences to the family of uh, Carl Withers. Uh, you would know him as Apollo Creed from the from the Rocky movies. Uh, you know, I first met Carl on the football field. I think I was a rookie, and we were playing in Oakland, and it was doing warm-ups, and he ran up to me. I guess he was playing linebacker for the Raiders at the time, uh, trying to make the team. And he told me, you know, introduced himself. He told me he was an actor, and, uh, you know, wanted to talk to me about it. Uh, I had my uh, trainer uh, give him my phone number, and we talked once in a while, but not that much. He almost immediately went on to have success as an actor and, of course, uh, playing that Apollo Creed character uh, really helped. But um, to the family, to his family, his children, his parents, uh, my condolences. He was a terrific guy, very, very nice guy, and a very talented actor, I might add. God bless. Take care. Yeah. So that was, and you, one thing I noticed that between the vlogs he made, his face was fuller there than in the ones, the more recent ones, right? But that was February 2nd. And then, of course, January 28th, he talked about the Lions. But, you know, again, it was out of his hat. So, uh, there, so he was. This is what he was saying about the Lions. Hey, X World is me, yours truly. I haven't been around in a while, but the day is kind of a special day because it was uh, 66 years ago, 1957, that I attended my very first professional football game, and that game was the 49ers versus the Lions in what was a playoff game, which is unusual because they didn't really play playoff games, but the way the season ended, they needed to play a playoff game to see who would win, I guess, the, the West. Uh, I attended the game. I was uh, not quite 10 years old at the time, and uh, it was a hell of a game. The 49ers were way ahead at that time. The rumors were the 49ers opened the champagne bottles at halftime. But as the second half rolled around, uh, Detroit got hot, and Detroit ended up winning that game. 1957, 66 years ago, and here we are again with the 49ers uh, playing the Lions uh, in a playoff game. Boy, been quite a while. Anyway, I'm excited. I'll be watching the, uh, the game with most of my friends at one of my usual haunts. I believe the 49ers overall have a better team. I thought uh, last week the the layoff, the two and a half week or whatever uh, break they took hurt them, and they started off bad in the line. I mean, the uh, Packers really outplayed them the first half, but uh, I'm going along with them, and I guess I have to go with Lamar. Uh, it's rare that an MVP 
which he hasn't been voted yet, but I expect him to be voted. It's kind of where that the MVP wins uh, uh, the Super Bowl, but uh, I don't know if he'll win the Super Bowl, but uh, I'm picking him to go to the Super Bowl for the AFC. In any event, good luck to you today. Should be a couple of well of the games. <laughs> uh, take care. Good luck. Yeah, so he, had, he said he'd been gone for a while. Uh, uh, let's see. And working backward here. Uh, it's January 14th. And then we had January 28th. Yeah, so it's a, he was definitely... Uh, His his vlog frequency had gone down, and then his his last one before that was December tenth, and he was welcoming Jaden Downs to the Heisman Club, a group of people who have the Heisman Trophy. But again, his face was starting to look gaunt. Um, and here again, he says, uh. You have a complaint if you beat your Georgia football. <laughs> I got to hear that one. He's got his Bills cap on. Hold on a second. What was he saying here? All right. Hey, x well, it's me, yours truly. Well, uh, I was surprised today to see they still talk about uh, the college playoffs. Now, I think they got it right. And I said, I think they got it right. Uh, for instance, if, Wa if Washington would have lost Pinnock, let's say, he got a knee injury in the fourth quarter of that Oregon game uh, and wasn't available, no matter if they won or lost, wasn't available for the playoffs, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have voted them in. Um, Florida State, look, I understand what you're saying. Undefeated. Uh, you deserve the right. You lost your star quarterback. The only way you can shut people up, let everybody know, including me, that it was a mistake that they didn't pick you is to uh, beat Georgia in the Orange Bowl. You they know, didn't, they didn't do Las that. Vegas has <laughs> made them a 14 and a half point underdog. I live in Vegas. It's amazing how good these guys are on picking games. And I personally don't think any team that could be 14 and a half point underdogs to anybody should be in the final four but shut me up shut everybody up beat georgia in the orange bowl and we'll we'll all say they made a mistake <laughs> i wear my bills hat because bills is getting to the point where they can't afford to lose uh if they're gonna make the playoffs they pretty much got a, a win four out of five or five out of six uh, the majority of the games that are left and they got a tough one uh this week so i'm wearing my hat and, um i i'm advising all bills fans say a prayer send them good vibes to the buffalo bills because we need to win these games i was shocked that when she killed leonard shaq leonard was available uh a middle linebacker the bills lost, uh, lost milano uh, the one thing we know about Shaq Leonard, he plays the hell out of the pass. Seems to me that's what the Bills need. So I was really surprised that they didn't go after and try to get him. Maybe they did and it was quiet, but to me, that, that was mandatory. They should have gotten that guy, and he would be a big help to them the rest of the way. In any event, tough one this week, but go Bills. Go Niners. <laughs> Good luck to you guys. Have a good weekend. Take care. Oh, I'm in second place by one game in my fantasy league, even though, as I told you in the beginning of the season, that NFL, uh, the NFL Network, who we play fantasy at, uh, predicted that I would be uh, like something like 0 and 14. <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. Good coaching. That's what it is. You Take go. care. You tell them, Juice. And that's, you know, that was what that was December. That was December. 6th, hey, it's then December 3rd. Um, uh, and talking about the college football playoffs, that is hot. Uh, and then let's see here November 26th. So between December 3rd and November 26th, he wasn't going as much. Uh, that was November 20th. Okay. Um, and number 19. So he, he, he was at a point where he was putting off 
a good clip of these, a good clip. But as to what happened to him, I don't know. I think I'm going to research that in a second. There's a gentleman here who want to make some comments uh, about OJ. Jim Jim says, OJ did not kill Nicole Brown Simpson. It was his kid. OJ took the fall for his kid. Then he goes on to say, I have changed. I thought OJ did it. The police were corrupt and they got the wrong Simpson and they had no choice but to go with it. Jim Jim says, uh, people didn't realize in the 70s, OJ was just as popular as Muhammad Ali. Absolutely. And he says, actually, I think this is the, it's the vaccine. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, even the year, this year, OJ still has the million dollar smile. Doesn't he though? You know, uh, oh, that, see, that's the OJ that I remember was, a, he was a football hero. Let me put it this way. If that stuff hadn't happened, OJ would have been known for what he should be known for. The NFL's first running back to break the 2000 yard barrier. That's what OJ Simpson was known for. Okay. And that should not be forgotten. OJ Simpson was big and fast. He was a freight train and he was difficult to stop, difficult to put down. There were a number of people who had problems with trying to tackle OJ Simpson. I, I believe that OJ went up against at one point Dick Butkus. Um, and let me see how that, that fared out fared. But when I say went up against, I'm talking as if there wasn't, you know, an offense and a defensive line or passing game to take the heat off the running game. But in those days in the 60s, they, they all they did was run. A lot of teams ran, and if they passed, it was kind of like the Pope making an announcement that you know there, there were teams that that passed that little, and so when you had a, the AFL, a whole league of passing that featured the Oakland Raiders and the San Diego Chargers and the Kansas City Chiefs, wow, you know that was the kind of brand of football that everybody liked. The NFL knew it, so Al Davis, shrewd as he is, forced the merger, and the Buffalo, the Buffalo Bills, and OJ Simpson. We're all part of that. He was part of that history. So if I type OJ Simpson, um, and both OJ Simpson and Dick Buckus are gone. That that is now, that, oh, that, you know that, that that just hits me. Both OJ Simpson and Dick Dick Buckus are gone. Okay, and there's a Newsweek article here where. O.J. Simpson said that Dick Buckus was the only player he was afraid of. The only player, October 7th of 2023. He said Dick Buckus intimidated him. I wonder if he said this on one of his, his, his uh, video blogs. Um, and Dick Buckus was 80 years old. And um, he said that he, uh, his thoughts on Buckus were res from resurfaced clips shared by NFL historian Kelvin Gallagher to X from a Twitter as he paid tribute to the late footballer. Um, and he said, is there, a, is there a place to hide around here? Simpson joked in the throwback clip before sharing his thoughts on Buckus. Did Buckus, Christ, he's the only guy that ever, I guess, intimidated me on a football field. <laughs> there were a lot of people that OJ was not afraid of. And that was one of the few. But that, that was one of the few. But OJ could run like the wind. And he wasn't known for, you, you know, hitting you or going around you or, or bouncing off of you like Earl Campbell. Because he was so big and fast, there were defensive linemen and linebackers and defensive backs who just didn't want to touch him. And he would just fly right by him like nobody's business. Uh, that was OJ. OJ was able to take his football field heroics, which unfortunately didn't result in a championship for the Buffalo Bills, to Hollywood, and he played in a number. He played a number of roles. So OJ has a what's called an IMDb list. I didn't get that. Could you and, try again? Hey Siri, stop. And so okay, OJ has an IMDb listing, and I'm going to call it up right now. DB OJ Simpson. 
and it can read the number of acting credits he has. So OJ Simpson, 1947, I'm gonna put, put this up here. It's very sad, very sad, very sad. Uh, let me get rid of that uh, ad here if I scroll down. OJ Simpson, 1947 to 1924, excuse me, to 2024, I'm sorry. Um, Oriental James Simpson was an American, former football running back, broadcaster, actor, advertising spokesman. Simpson attended the University of Southern California where he played football for the USC Trojans and won the Heisman Trophy in 1968. He played professionally as a running back in the NFL for 11 seasons, primarily with the Buffalo Bills, from 1969-1977, he also played, I should say, for the San Francisco 49ers, uh, for the San Francisco 49ers from 1978 to 1979. In 1973, he became the first NFL player to rush for more than 2,000 yards in a single season. And remember, we're talking about a 14-game season, all right? Keep that in mind, okay? He holds the record for the single season yards per game average, which stands at 143.1 yards per game. He was the only player to ever rush for over 2,000 yards in the 14-game regular season NFL format. Simpson was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1983 and the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1985. After retiring from football, he began new careers in acting and football broadcasting. Now, in terms of his... His, his famous quotes, uh, he said, the day you complete take complete responsibility for yourself is the day you stop making excuses. That's the day you start to the top. That was in 75 in Playboy magazine. And, um, and he, uh, of course, regarding the, the, the acquittal, he said, when things have settled down a bit, I'll pursue as my primary goal in life, the killer or killers who slaughtered Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. And that didn't happen. Um, in the interview with Knight Ritter uh, in the 70s, on his acting career, he said, obviously I'm not Dustin Hoffman. I have to play an athletic type just as Woody Allen has to play a wimp type. <laughs> so no matter how many acting lessons I took, the public just wouldn't buy me as Othello. <laughs> it's funny stuff. Uh, he, O.J. Simpson, if you think of in mind, just died just days, just a week after the passing of Lou, Lou Gossett Jr. So we're losing some greats um, in, uh, in our American history, <sighs> greats as, as, as actors, as people. Um, uh, as public figures, um, wow, it, it's it's hard to uh, hard to fathom, and it's hard to fathom. He trying to find out what his uh, he got a award, he won award, he got a worst supporting actor award for the Raz in the Razzies. <laughs> This is 1995 for Naked Gun, 3.3 and a third, the final insult. <laughs> uh, he was nominated uh, for Worst Supporting Actor, the Stinker Award uh, for Capricorn One. Um, <laughs> oh, poor fellow. But look, he was in more than that. He had some see, famous appearances, and I, so it's, it's wild that I can't find them here. Uh, okay. There's by our credits. Okay, here I got the credits. OJ Simpson, he has 79 credits. He has, excuse me, he has 38 credits as an actor. And including his most recent was, was 2025 in post production called Mayday, where he played Norberg. All right. So Mayday, Mayday Z is in post production. Uh, he has another one. Uh, add, ADH-TV with Lou Martin, a TV series in 2008. It's courtroom parody. 
In 2004, The Lemon Twist was a short. 1994, Adventures in Wonderland. Frogman, the TV movie before that, The Naked Gun, 33 and a half, The Final Insult. No Place to Hide. Then CIA codename Alexa, 1992. Then First in 10 TV series where he played T.D. Parker from 1986 to 1991. And The Naked Gun in two and a half, the Smell of Fear in 1991, in the Heat of the Night TV series, we played Councilman Lawton Styles in 1989, The Naked Gun from the Files of Police Squad in 1988, a Student Exchange, which is a TV movie in 87, Back to the Beach in 87, Ham Bone and Heel Hilly in 83, Cocaine and Blue Eyes, a TV movie in 83. Goldie and the Boxer Go to Hollywood in a TV movie in 1981. Guess who's a boxer? Detour to Terror, TV movie in 1980. Goldie and the Boxer, TV movie in 79. Firepower in 79. Capricorn 1 in 77. A Killing Affair, TV movie 77. Roots, yes. Yes, he was in Roots. He played Caddy Touri uh, in 77. The Cassandra Crossing in 76. I remember that. Killer Force, I remember Roots 2, of course. Killer Force, 76. The Towering Inferno, he was in The Towering Inferno, played Jernigan in 1994. I saw that movie four times. The Klansman, he played in 1994 version of that called, he played was Garth. Why? Uh, he was the athlete. Here's Lucy, TV series. He was himself, O.J. Simpson, uh, in two episodes. Owen Marshall, Counselor at Law TV Series in 73. Uh, Cades County TV Series in 72. The Dream of Hamish Moss in 69. Medical Center TV Series, he played Brew Wiley in 69. Death of a Gunfighter in 69. The Name of the Game TV Series, we played the Gas Chamber Prison Guard in 68. Ironside TV Series, we played an onlooker in 68. It Takes a fee Thief. TV series in 68, he played an airplane passenger. Dragnet 67 TV series, he was a potential recruit. So he started as an actor. Even though he was a famous football player, he started from the ground up. He was an extra and then went on to be a headliner, an actor in these movies. He has six credits as a producer. OJ Fitness, Minimum Maintenance Fitness for Men, that's 1994. Cocaine and Blue Eyes in 83, High Five TV movie, uh, where he was executive producer in 82, Goldie and the Boxer Go to Hollywood, and Goldie and the Boxer, those two TV movies he was executive producer for, and Detour to Terror, he was executive producer in 1980, and then he has a number of credits under the thanks for Concepts, Trenches, Vortex, which is a short, very special thanks. Megan Me, very special short. He has a lot of thanks. His thanks started in 1990, excuse me, started in 2002, folks. He had one, two, three, four, five, five thanks in the year 2022. And 2021, he had three one for life through an lens, another for Lonely Road, a documentary that was a short, another short called Is It Worth It? 2021. There's a Lemon Twist 2004. And then there's 103 credits to mention to name where he plays O.J. Simpson. Some of them are like, for example, Sunday Night Football 2022, all right, where he did that. He played himself. Buffalo Bills versus the Los Angeles Rams. And he's got a number of credits, too. O.J. Simpson, Blood, Lies, and Murder TV series special 2023. Trial of the Century, you know, all these things, okay? He's all over the place. So O.J. Simpson was a true bona fide star. There's, there's no question about it. Now, do I remember where I was at? This is that question. Do you remember where you were when O.J. Simpson... And AC Cowlings got in the white Bronco and went on this trip being pursued by the LA police. Yeah, I remember exactly where I was the day that happened. 
I walked into the Golden Bear in Oakland at 389. So it's called Room 389 now, 389 Grand Avenue. The place was packed. I mean, packed. There are people there all day long. There was no internet, okay, at the time. You know, you didn't go online to check and see what was going on on Twitter or Facebook or somebody's blog like mine. I hadn't heard of blogging at the time. In 1994, I was into my second year as columnist for the Montclarian. Actually, I believe I wrote about O.J. Simpson uh, and the audience of the Golden Bear. And I was doing consulting work in addition to my job as columnist. And that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Because the very next year I got hired by Elihu, that was 95, to be his economic advisor. That happened middle of the year and I started the end of that year. Um, so, but I remember where I was. And then Robert says, I was four years old watching the Knicks game. See? <laughs> and how do you know you're, how, you, how do you know what you were watching at four, right? It, right? How do you know what you're watching it for? But thank God for the internet that we can tie together all of this and, and talk about O.J. Simpson and his legacy. Uh, unfortunately, his legacy is marred by his sad relationship with Nicole Brown Simpson, and who rest in peace to both of them. And 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 Ronald Goldman, I don't know if they knew each other, uh, but. Uh, Tough stuff. I want to see, having checked Twitter, what TMZ is reporting. You would say, why TMZ? Because TMZ was the place to go um, regarding O.J. Simpson at the time. And um, and it's in, 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 uh, I'm, this is what they have here. Dead at 76. Uh, this is, TMZ, okay? But I said it was 94, right? And, okay. The Goldman's attorney, David Cook, tells TMZ, OJ died without penance, adding what while he may be gone, his multi-million dollar judgment is not, and the Goldman's are interested in discerning what money and assets he may have left behind they can collect. Give it up. Uh, Cook goes on to say they'll be exploring their options now that OJ is dead, including figuring out whether or not he left behind a fund, with his in-state that they can pounce on. Um, Caitlyn Jenner, who used to be close friends with O.J. Simpson, tells TMZ good riddance. She has since posted on X. Tom Lang says uh, one of the lead detectives who work in the O.J. murder tells TMZ I have nothing to say. He doesn't care. See, they don't. Harvey Levin always thought O.J. did it and all this stuff, okay? Um, and so that's that's what you're going to get, all right? That's what you're going to get from him. Uh, that's what you're going to get. But you're not going to get it from me uh, because there are a number of people who, who, let me put it this way. For those of you who don't know this by now, and I'm sure that's maybe just only a handful of you, uh, for the O.J. Simpson case, there was what black folks like myself thought and what white folks thought. And what you just saw was a picture of what white America thought about OJ and still thinks about OJ Simpson, uh, as expressed by those people who basically, let's be honest, were uh, enjoying the fruits of his labor, you know, uh, making money from OJ. And the situation with OJ and his wife was not ideal. He, you don't hit your wife. But you also don't sleep around on your husband, and that's what was going on in their relationship. Now, apparently she was doing drugs or something like that and um, got, in got involved with some of the wrong people. Now, did that was that what led to her demise? There's a part of me that thinks so, because I don't care what anybody says. OJ 
was not enough to overpower two people like that. There are normal people who want to believe the big black male angry situation and, um, you know, and, and go from there. But I'm not buying that. I, I, and this is what really started me down the road to, you know, when I first heard about Jameis Winston and his situation, I didn't believe what, what the media was putting out. And my skepticism had to do with how the OJ trial was handled, the fact that there is a white version and a black version. You know, the white folks at that time were very will willing to just literally burn you at the stake as a black man for anything. And that's why you have so many cases today of black men released from jail be because they hadn't done anything, they were falsely accused. This racism, folks, all right? Racism today it gets us to the point, all right? Where do you know that you, you know what it is to have a, a closed account, right? Closed account in credit is where they they can't collect on your account. You owe a lot, you haven't paid. So it goes into collections. All right. Now, if I told you there was a study done that determined which states had the most closed accounts. Which state would you think it, all right? More than likely, you might think it was a state that had a number of people that look like me, but it's not. It's Wyoming is number one, followed by Texas, which is not known for, it's like gigantic, you know, population of black people that's so overwhelming. No. And then number three is Montana. So Wyoming has no black people. Montana has... I think what, three tenths of 1%, something like that. Those are the first three states. And you would say, why? Simple, because if you're white, it's easier. If you're white with bad credit, you can still get credit and still screw up at it. And that's the easiest and simplest way to explain all those closed accounts. All right, that's racism, folks. It says that if you're black and you, have a record of closed accounts, you're not going to get credit. But if you're white, nah, no problem. No problem to this day. All right. That's the kind of racism that impacted the LA police department when they were investigating OJ and Mark Furman and the people who read TMZ know it and Harvey Levin knows it too. Uh, it's sad when you have some black folks that just want to believe that they're contrarian or newly discovered black folks and all that and then automatically tar and fur the OJ without doing an ounce of research themselves. That's the sad part, okay? So um, I'm going to type OJ Simpson here. Uh, and that's why it's good to make your own news today. This is what is said on uh, the, the standard headline here is, oh, and uh, Robert was saying, I believe is a frame the guilty guy? I don't understand what that says. At any rate, uh, O.J. Simpson, former football star, acquitted of murder, dies at 76. And O.J. Simpson dies of cancer at 76, family says. Athlete acquitted of murder, um, dies after battle of cancer. I don't know what kind of cancer. Uh, variety, O.J. Simpson, football player and actor accused of murdering ex-wife, dies um, and this, you know, what was OJ convicted of armed robbery and kidnapping. Uh, and that was really the one thing I think OJ would like to have back. I was really disappointed that he allowed himself to get caught up, get triggered. Cause I thought there were people who were trying to trigger him. And what happened in this case is he got together with, another friend who told him that these people, and this is where folks, OJ should have just not listened to him, should have called the police, used his star power to get on television to talk about this. But I believe he thought that people were taking advantage of him because of their people who were just willing to get him in trouble uh, because they wanted to believe he killed Nicole. All right. So he, so he wound up serving nine years in prison for this. Nine years. That was a nine years of his life that he should have back. Okay. And 
uh, he had pointed a gun at these. I will just I will just say pointed a gun at these really uh, uh, ne'er do well fellows who had taken his his stuff as he put it. He had a friend who's helped him who actually got released earlier than he did. Um, but they shouldn't have done it to begin with. They went to confront this guy at this hotel. And I wouldn't have handled it like that at all. And that's the one thing you have to understand, particularly, I tell this to everybody, particularly black men, call the police. You have a problem, don't assume the police are not going to work on your behalf. Make the police do their job, okay? You hear what I'm saying? Make the police do their job of working on your behalf. Because if someone did something wrong to you, you should have the right for equal treatment under the law, by the law, enforcement, okay? Okay. But what happens is that there are those of us like OJ who believe, hey, they're not going to work in my favor. And so therefore, they look at, they think street justice is the only way. It's not the only way. It's not the right way. And it gives fuel to those people who would think that, hey, if he could get this man and do this sort of thing, then maybe he really did do that to Nicole. All right? But as my mom said back then, OJ is stupid. O OJ is stupid. And he could do, you know, yeah, okay, some stupid things. All right. Uh, after all, a number, of, as a number of people would say he was a football player, which I think is unfair to football players. Uh, it's, it's a life I think OJ would love to have back. And I can't imagine there wasn't a day that went by he didn't think about that. I don't think it's a matter of good riddance at all. Uh, I think it's sad. OJ Simpson is, to me, a symbol of a black man who tried to rise above the station that was created for all of us then because of racism. In politics, for example, if you wanted to be in politics, you had to be a lawyer. You had to find these avenues because the standard avenue of just getting a job in the private sector wasn't available to you. And because you were denied education, or didn't run in the right circles where they were pushing you to get an education, okay? I call that the vestiges of racism where you've got those of us who believe that the only way to be black is to speak broken English and everything else, and it's not the way. That's a bad, that is a byproduct of racism. That is, as far as I'm concerned, abnormal. Speaking in a normal way is normal. That's the way you should be. But the society and this engine of racism has produced Black folks who are like that, they can't help it. It's not their fault. It's the overarching white-dominated society that allowed that and pushed that and still maintains that in different circles to this day regarding money. It It's not... OJ's history winds up not being a great indictment on American culture. All right? It just... It, there's no other way than to put that out, and that's a that's a fact, all right? That is an absolute fact. Um, I remember when he got involved in that, I remember thinking it totally shattered my image of him, the man that I thought I was at least acquainted with was a person who didn't do what he was accused of doing, that he got involved with those folks. But I don't really know what happened between Nicole and Ron and he. I met Cato Kalin. I interviewed Cato Kalin at in Oakland uh, at the Wizard World convention. Very nice guy. And I'm wondering what Cato would have to say. I, in fact, hold on a second. I thought I had Cato Kalin's number. Um, let me see something here. Uh, something like that. I'm trying to think of if I have Cato Kalin's number. Uh, wait a minute, Cato. 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 I don't. I have Cato Kalin at Kate, but I do not have Cato Kalin. Thought I had his number. But I met him at something called the Wizard 
World Festival. And this was, uh, whoops. Okay, then, excuse me. Okay, something I gotta check on here. Let's see here. Perhaps, hmm, let me see here. Kato Kalen Zenny 62. I go to my YouTube channel. <clears throat> search there he is okay here it is all right because he was master of ceremonies so i will this is kato kaylin right here let me get rid of that <clears throat> excuse me let me get of that get rid of that uh, commercial standing in the way hey everybody i'm at wizard world oakland and uh <laughs> The great Barry Williams, who played Peter Brady, just finished an uh, interview, which I got here on Zenny62 on YouTube and my blog set. And uh, I just got here, and he was talking, and I'm going to roll around and see some of the signs, and uh, uh, we're uh, going to uh, take you around here and see if you like my favorite game now, or the uh, stage, and... Uh, background music and, and everything else, and maybe in one place, and that is lovely. Maybe yeah, again. It's the women of sci-fi. The women of sci-fi. The women of sci-fi. That's fifteen minutes. And what? Listen to this. Amazing. Women of sci-fi. He says, Women of Sci-Fi are coming up next, folks. And that's in 15 minutes. Katrina Law. Right here. Katrina Law. Who else? Katrina Law. And, and Courtney Ford. And Courtney Ford. Yeah. This, you guys, so. you got to come to the main stage. And, well, you're going to love it. Courtney Ford. Katrina Law. From yeah. Holly Marie Combs. I'm being filled with a man with a brand new iPhone that looks like mine. Hey, hell. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So come to Wizard World in Oakland. Check it out, folks. Women of science fiction are coming up. So that I'm going to get set up for therapy, and I use Kato Kalen. And um, there was one time I got an interview. That, yeah, interview there. And I think I got another clip. At any rate, he was very much not of. And I didn't. I didn't try because a number of people didn't try. He was in a whole scrum of. Interviewers at one point, nobody asked him about OJ Simpson. Different story now. Um, so I'm wondering what he says. But oh, it gives me a headache to relive all that all over again. Because it represents a certain evil in our society that uh was thrown into our face. Domestic violence, racism. You know, the ook, the ook, ook stuff. So as I say, I prefer to remember O.J. Simpson as a great running back with the Buffalo Bills and uh, and just simply leave it at that. Uh, in fact, I'm wondering if I got any email from the league about that. Uh, this is not going to be the last time I talk about O.J., Today, there's a lot to be said uh, because he lived a full life. God bless you, OJ. Rest in peace. Subscribe to Zinni62 on YouTube. I'll see you.